Parang Raw vs. Smackdown. What's up guys? It's your boy Boss Mag back to gaming.com and in this review we're going to be taking a closer look at Intel's new mobile CPU, the Intel Core i7 11800H aka Tiger Lake H. We're going to be checking out performance in both gaming and content creation and discuss if Intel is back in the race for the mobile performance crown. Intro. We've already seen a preview of Intel's 10 nanometer Tiger Lake CPUs in action in our previous reviews, but the architecture hasn't been stretched that far until only recently. The new high performance 10 nanometer CPUs from Intel, featuring a Willow Corp architecture, marks the first departure of mobile from the Skylake derivatives and debuts Intel's 10 nanometer Super Pin part to a larger audience. Tiger Lake H bumps up Intel designs to 8 core and 6 core models intended for enthusiasts and also brings with it support for PCIe Gen 4, DDR4 3200 memory support, as well as performance improvements from the architecture change. As mentioned, there's a couple of CPUs as part of Intel's enthusiast Tiger Lake H lineup, but we're specifically focusing on the Intel Core i7 11800H in this review, featuring 8 cores and 16 threads. This CPU serves as the middle of the road option for Intel's current gen laptops for enthusiasts. To make things really, really interesting and fair, we managed to get two identical laptops to test. Same SSD, same memory, same cooling, same everything to test that. For those of you not familiar, reviewing laptops is very complicated. This instances wherein you can compare two different parts objectively is quite rare. In this case, we, the unit we will be using is the Asus Top Dash. It's pretty much identical to each other for both Intel and AMD. I think very slight differences in the board layout, but ultimately everything is the same. That said, I'm excited to share with you our findings, but just to clarify, we won't be detailing much about the Asus Top Dash, but I'll try to insert some comments here and there when it's possible. This review will focus primarily on the performance of the CPUs that we have for today. I have a more detailed article discussing the comparison in my website, backtogaming.com, so please take time to read that if you want to find out more. Now, with that out of the way, let's run through our specs for our system. And this is going to be a mouthful. In the blue corner, representing Intel, we have the Core i7 11800H, an 8 core and 16 thread processor featuring Intel's 10 nanometer Willacombe CPU architecture. We have 8GB of DDR4 3200 memory and 1TB SSD. And in the red corner, we have the AMD Ryzen 7 5800H, also an 8 core and 16 thread CPU based on Zen 3 and is built on TSMC 7 nanometer node. The system also features 8 gigabyte of memory as well as a 1 terabyte SSD. Here's some shots of the actual memory and SSD used by the system as well as the board layout and cooling solution. Both systems will be running in maximum screen brightness and turbo profile. Please note that other manufacturers may choose to tune their systems a little bit differently than Asus, so your results, either or either on AMD or Intel, may vary. I wanted to focus on just gaming performance for this review, but given the extremely short period that we were allotted for the review and having two units to test with a completely new test suite, uh, the time was just not enough and we can only prepare a couple of gaming footage for this review. But with that out of the way, let's just uh, jump right to it. So I touched on the CPU's performance targets in the live stream and a number of people were asking about performance on Premiere Pro. So starting with that, again, we're using Puget Bench for this benchmark to test our mobile CPUs. Puget Bench is actually a benchmark that gauges systems on professional use and tests systems on 4K video formats, amongst other things. In Premiere Pro, we see the Intel Core i7 11800H getting a score of 433 based on Puget Benchmark versus 412 from the AMD Ryzen 7 5800H. Based on Puget Bench's listing, AMD averages around less than a score of 650 while the Intel Core i7 11800H is around just under 700 points. This puts the current popular notion of AMD being the better video editing platform out the window, although that's a relatively small margin. Still, if your work primarily revolves around Premiere Pro, the performance advantage does go to Intel. 
The main thing to note here is that memory plays a big part in Premiere Pro as well as Photoshop and both these systems will benefit greatly from having 16GB or more of memory. Speaking of Photoshop, our Intel Core i7-11800H system scores 582 against the Ryzen 750-800H at 544. Now, Fugit Systems score database is a bit muddied for Photoshop results for the Ryzen 750-800H, but for the most part, Intel users are outscoring 5800H entries to the same percentage as our results. To give that context, the calibration system for the base 1000 score for this Photoshop benchmark is a desktop featuring an Intel Core i9-9900K. But keeping it grounded, our Core i7-11800H, again, a mobile CPU, does nearly the same as a 9th generation desktop CPU. We have an entire list of CPU benchmarks in the article version of this review. The link will be down in the description so you can find out more as we move on to gaming benchmarks. I have to admit I really wanted to get review units with a faster graphics card to really give the CPU a workout. Still, we dropped the resolution to 720p to increase the CPU demand from our games. For those curious, we're testing 720 for exploratory purposes more than real-world contexts. At lower resolutions, the GPU can pump out more frames which the CPU has to process and this creates a low a scenario wherein you're going to be CPU restricted. Theoretically, the maximum performance you get at these lower resolutions will never be exceeded in your performance at larger resolutions. Across the board, we see Intel's Core i7-11800H taking a slight lead with CSGO being the extremely light game that it is. but Everything's pretty much really, really close. This goes the same in native 1080p though. Things are more even at this uh, resolution with average performance differences getting really diminished for Intel. GPU heavy titles like The Witcher 3 and Shadow of the Tomb Raider show consistent results as expected from AAA games that hit the GPU more than the CPU. This is why I said it would be great if we had an RTX 3070 for laptops or even an RTX 3080 to work with. Regardless, much like our benchmark, Intel Tiger Lake H45 closes the gap in performance with AMD Ryzen in gaming. Please do note that results will vary between laptop designs, especially RTX 30 series powered ones with variable TDP ratings from other companies. Before we close, let's talk about battery life. Putting our system through its paces in PC Mark 10 Modern Office battery test with performance settings and maximum screen brightness for both laptops right here, the Asus Top Dash F15. The Intel powered one records 4 hours and 44 minutes. Respectable enough for a gaming laptop but compared to our Ryzen system, right here, the system persists for up to 8 hours and 42 minutes. Intel still has a lot of work to do. Again, it is worth noting that manufacturers other than Asus can configure their system more conservatively with regards to office workload and should extend uptime, but testing with other workloads, especially multi-threaded ones, we've concluded that Intel's Tiger Lake H does like to sip the battery a bit more quicker. In closing, Intel's Tiger Lake H CPU does put Intel back in the conversation when it comes to performance, especially lighter workloads with some multi-threaded work closing the gap that AMD has given themselves. Leveraging faster memory, faster storage, Intel Tiger Lake H laptops utilizing Gen 4 drives could edge out Ryzen systems in storage dependent workloads, particularly video editing. If performance is fueling your endgame, then Intel definitely has a lot going on for it with the Core i7-11800H. This does come at a cost of battery, so if you're going to be reliant on your battery life and want every ounce of juice fully maximized, an AMD system makes the more logical choice. In terms of gaming, depending on your game, the difference is close, with only CPU limited games benefiting more from Intel in this case. So, in closing, who's the better choice? Well, obviously performance goes to Intel, but only by a small margin which in most cases is trumped by battery life from AMD. Despite gamers have probably having system plugged in most of the time, you can't take away the advantage of having some battery left when you need it the most, like a power outage or a long flight. The difference is surprisingly close, but Intel does have the unique advantage of PCIe Gen 4 support for storage without taking PCIe bandwidth from the GPU. Some designs will have support for Thunderbolt 4, something that content creators reliant on high-speed data transfer would find advantages, especially given Intel's slight edge in handling videos. Ultimately, a lot of things will be influenced by how laptop makers will design their laptops. By itself, Intel has managed to restore some of their shine with Intel Tiger Lake H. And if you're looking for an enthusiast laptop, take note of the points that we've highlighted above before making your choice.
This has been your boy Boss Man, back to gaming.com. If you want to see more videos like this one, don't forget to like the video, comment the video, and subscribe. And I will see you guys on the next one. Peace.